Welcome to my mining office. Today I just got uh, some new parts for a, uh, a second rig that I want to build. So I'll go over that quickly and just show you quickly the, the setup that I've got going here. And this is where the second rig will be going. Um, I only have five cards in there right now because I, I just sold off one of them actually. Um, and uh, and this is the new parts for the build we're going to be doing today. So <clears throat> I just thought I'd I'd show people basically the bare minimum it takes to have a decent running rig, I guess, for six cards. And uh, and quickly show how to build this. First, I'll go over all the uh, all the parts quickly, how much I paid for them, and basically why I chose them. Uh, first part here is uh, the Z390A Pro uh, MSI motherboard. Um, honestly, if I could have, I probably would have went with a 12 or 16 GPU motherboard, uh, one of the mining specific ones. But with the prices now and the, the GPU and computer part market, um, I think this is a much more smarter choice. It only cost me $130. Uh, all the prices are going to be in Canadian dollars, so this was $130 on special. And uh, I know it should work properly with six GPUs and I actually already have one of these motherboards in that computer which is currently mining as well with a 1660 Super. <clears throat> so uh, that's the first part. Uh, like I said, I know it works properly for six GPUs. It was on special, it was inexpensive uh, and I already have one so I know it works well. Second part here is a uh, Intel Celeron uh, G4930 uh, LGA1151 socket. Um, the reason why I chose this, uh, it's not a very powerful CPU, um, but it was only $60 uh, Canadian, again, plus tax. So, again, it's the bare minimum to get the job done. Your CPU, are, you're not really using it when you're uh, GPU mining, and I don't plan on CPU mining with this specific rig. So, I went for the most cost-efficient option. Um, this is just a USB with Windows on it. Um, I'll probably just start off with Windows, maybe go to Hive OS later. Um, and the last piece I actually had to purchase was this M.2 uh, SSD. So the reason I went with the M.2 SSD um, versus, you know, just a normal SATA SSD is because I kind of wanted to save the power and, you know, data cable that actually have to go to a physical uh, SATA SSD. I know you can get an adapter for M.2 to run an additional GPU. But I don't really care, it's going to be going in the 6 GPU Jetta, um, VETA frame. So I don't really care about running 7, and I'd rather just save the cable, cl uh, cable clutter. Excuse me. This was only uh, $10 more than you know the equivalent SATA version, so to me, 10 bucks well spent. And this RAM I actually just pulled out um, of my first rig here. Uh, so it didn't cost me anything, I was running two sticks of RAM for you know basically no reason. So I'm reusing this part, and that's it. Um, now, obviously, I'm missing something. That's the power supply, and that is something again I'm reusing, but from an extremely old build of uh, of mine that I've disassembled since. Uh, it's a Antec True Power 850 watt uh, semi modular. Uh, I have only you know a few of the additional cables attached, but it is semi modular. Um, it's bronze rated, so it's not the best power, uh, power supply in the world, but it works well. It's worked for me for a very long time. So might as well reuse uh, stuff you have instead of spending money on, on new things if you don't need it. And that is the old <laughs> old setup it was attached to. Uh, that is not really reusable. I could run three GPUs off this maybe, but eh, we'll see. So this will be the power supply and that's all we'll need. Uh, we have some risers also, some splitters, uh, but with no GPUs to put in there now, those won't quite be useful. So we'll get to that some other time. Okay, so I forgot to go over this, but just in case anybody's interested, the cards that are currently in, in this rig, uh, this is a Gigabyte 1060, obviously six gigabyte. Everything is mining Ethereum. Uh, behind that is a uh, MSI 1070. Uh, that's another Gigabyte uh, 1060. EVGA 1060 
and a ROG Strix 1070 again. So that's the current rig we got. I moved all my stuff over here to my uh, my work table where I'm gonna make the build happen. And again, I forgot to mention the, the Veta frame. Uh, shout out to Mining Chamber. Uh, I actually went to his uh, to his garage sale and uh, and picked up some gear. And this is one of the things I, I picked up uh, with the fans and all that. So shout out to him, thanks a lot. And, uh, and here we go. Now the first thing we're gonna need to get to obviously is the motherboard. Uh, a little dent in the box here, it shouldn't matter. Don't mind the cat, so gonna get this out of here. Uh, just taped. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna close the box. Two seconds to open up the motherboard, and uh, we'll get onto that in the CPU. I got the motherboard out here, and also opened up the CPU. So manual and here's our CPU and the fan. With you see the thermal paste already pre-applied on there. So uh, this is more than good enough for uh, our purpose here. As per the instructions. We're just going to lift this tab up, open the socket, and we're just going to make sure quickly that we're going to be inserting it the right way. There should be some indications on here, so I'm just going to check that. All right, so you see there's two little dots at the top right and top bottom. We have to align that with the little uh, notches that are on here. So. Gently just sat that in there. No pressure on the CPU at all. All right, just make sure it's properly seated. And now we're good to, uh, to go ahead and close this. All right. Make sure it's a little closed. And then we're just gonna pull the latch right underneath. And the little black thing will pop out. Oh, cut that thing out of the way, uh, and that's what it looks like. So you just clip it back in, uh, and that's it. Nothing really that complicated. So now we're off to the CPU cooler, which you see has uh, four little pins here, which are going to go into the four holes that you see there. Right out there and here. Okay, so I just put the heatsink on there. I didn't press any of the pins in yet. And I just unclipped here this because it's a little tight to get to the uh, CPU one fan. So we're gonna plug that in. And now make sure this guy is well centered and press down on the pins. All right, so that seems well installed. Um, next thing would be the RAM. Um, uh, it doesn't even say in here which slot it should go in, but to my knowledge, uh, if you're just putting in one stick, it should always go in the second one here. Um, so that's gonna be my first guess. And if it doesn't boot, this will be my first culprit. We'll look online in the manual and see which one uh, it should be, but uh, if I compare it to the other motherboard on my other rig, it's also the second dim slot from the left. Uh, so just make sure you're putting it in the right side, right? The notch is not equal on both ends. Oh, just my oven going off, don't mind that. And just pop it in. And we're nearly there. At this point, just make sure all your clips are properly you know, in and this is secure. And the next thing is gonna be the SSD, right? Uh, that's gonna go into this slot right here. And I believe we have to move uh, this mounting pin 
to the slot right before it. All right, and uh, now we'll get this SSD out of the packaging and that'll be our next step uh, to getting this ready to go. Got this stuff open. Uh, this comes with the motherboard. That's the only piece actually you have to go get in the box. It's a little uh, screw for the standoff here. And I opened up uh, the SSD. So if you don't know, this goes in on an angle into that slot. You push down on the side, right? And insert the screw. So here we go, everything's screwed in. I have uh, the power button plugged in to where I think I should go. And confused cap. Next step is gonna be putting in this power supply. Um, I'm gonna admit to you, I was a bit mystified on which way this should go because this way it blocks two USB ports. And if I would have put it the other way, sure it would have came out here, but then the motherboard cable would have to go in right here, which seems kind of impractical considering this mount is here, so. I might have it the wrong way. I plugged in the wires for the PSU into the motherboard and put the rig back in our trusty uh, little Amazon rack here. Uh, everything's plugged in, we're more or less ready to go. Uh, next step is uh, to just have it boot. I plugged it into the screen up top there, uh, and I have a little mouse and keyboard uh, up here just to interface with that rig. Um, so we're just gonna first boot to BIOS, set maybe a few things we'll need preemptively for when we mine with multiple GPUs, and uh, then we'll just go to installing Windows, I guess, uh, for now. So nothing too crazy, like I said, no GPUs yet. And unfortunately, I had to run this, uh, this PSU wire here for the uh, CPU power kind of across the rig because it was too short to reach underneath. So um, once I do get some cards in here, I might switch back this power supply with one of my RM850s. Uh, the, you know, the wires are a bit longer. Um, you can plug in more graphics cards with these and it's also gold rated versus this one only bronze. So before I had basically this rig running on you know, one RM850 and the True Power Antec one, um, but when I got uh, my second one, I replaced it just because it's more efficient, right? But uh, if I do end up having, you know, let's say 12 cards in both these rigs, I'll most likely put uh, one of the Antec ones, uh, or sorry, one of the Corsair ones on that rig, unless I decide to get a server power supply, uh, which will be able to basically power most of the cards, if not all of them on here. Um, I can still power one or two cards with, with this guy. Uh, there's enough connectors, um, but that's about it. So, you know. Four more potential cards in there that, uh, that'll need powering eventually, but first let's get the rig set up and we'll go from there. All right, so everything's turned on. Let's, uh... Switch it on and see what it gives. Aha! There we go. So, um... I didn't put the USB stick in with Windows, that explains that, and since it detects the SSD with nothing on it, uh, we get this screen. So, let me go and reboot it, and uh, we'll try and get into the BIOS this time. Off. And, and spam delete here. And there we go, we're into the BIOS. So from here I'm gonna configure a few things. I'm gonna go through, just check it out. And uh, I will check back with uh, certain settings you might wanna set. The first setting in uh, advanced and power management setup is restore after AC power loss. So I definitely like to turn that to uh, last state. So that way if it was powered on, my rig turns back on. If it was shut down, it stays shut down. So the next setting I'm going to change is under PCIe, it's in PCI subsystem settings and uh, you can see here it says above 4G memory slash cryptocurrency mining. So we are going to be cryptocurrency mining, so we will change that here to enabled and that will usually help when you have you know four, five or six GPUs on this motherboard. 
Last thing I would normally change is probably the uh, max link speed here. So you can set that to uh, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. But I think I'll just leave that on auto for now and uh, just play around with it once I get more cards. But that's the other important setting uh, you'll have to pay attention to if you're, let's say, starting off with, you know, six cards or whatnot. Obviously, this rig is still empty. Uh, I'll be going to pick up some 1660 Supers pretty soon for this. So I applied the changes, rebooted my computer, and obviously we're, uh, we're back to this screen. So now it's about time to uh, stick this USB thumb drive in with Windows and uh, get it installed. So this part I'll skip. There's nothing really that interesting. Last things you want to do um, usually would be to update Windows. I just do all the updates and then uh, I like to pause the updates for as long as possible uh, and uh, ideally forget about it. Next thing would be to get Chrome or something like Brave Browser, MSI Afterburner. Uh, so you can overclock your GPUs. And the last thing I usually get is NVIDIA GeForce Experience. However, since I don't have any GPUs in the rig right now, um, it doesn't let me install it. So once I have some, some supers to put in the rig, I will, uh, I will get back to you. That's all for now. If you have any questions about any parts of the build or any, any setup things, anything in the BIOS, let me know. I'll try to answer uh, to the best of my knowledge. So see you guys later and hopefully we'll have uh, some cards to put in this rig.